Okay, so this is warm up number two of our summer series. I might do one or two more warm ups that you can refer back to. Um, it's really important to understand the breathing, the way that you can open up the body, the way that you can make the body feel. You're in complete control and it is so important to understand that. But we will get to the sculpting part to where you're, you start seeing some definition in your arms, some belly stuff, some waist stuff, some booty stuff. But this part is more important than all of that because it'll come so much easier once you start to understand the breath, once you start to understand the form, once you start to understand the sensations that you should be feeling throughout your practice and also the way that the breath releases so much strain. As we all begin to grow older, as we all begin to grow more in life, you may notice how much tighter your body begins, begins to just feel. The way that you carry stress, everything. But it is totally manageable just by breathing and having your body in, in the most natural places that it needs to be. So for this warm up, I want us to begin actually to lie down on our backs. So go ahead and begin to shift to our back and we'll begin our intention setting, which we won't take too much time on. I will post a few, uh, a few things about meditating and everything else in here. These videos mainly are for the, the physical aspect of it, but I do want you to know that the importance of meditation is top priority. You need to make sure that your breath in and out through the nose is pretty even. So you can start off by maybe counting on a three or four count breath, keeping it even in and out through the nose. Or maybe you would just like to focus on a personal mantra. Maybe you have a lot of stuff that you're keeping in. Maybe you're dealing with a lot of stress, a lot of noise, anything. Maybe you need to breathe in, let, exhale, go. Or maybe breathe in slow, exhale down. Or maybe practice the ujjayi breath. For uh, some of my students who have been to my classes or done some of my videos online, you will know that the ujjayi breath is one of my favorite uh, forms of pranayama, which is more of like the mindful breathing techniques. So when you inhale, place your tongue on the inside, right behind the, fruit, the two front teeth. And as you inhale, place it there, keep it there. And as you exhale, you tighten your throat, creating, creating an audible like sound as if you're fogging up maybe a mirror or a window, but you're keeping your mouth closed. So you're reverting that warmth instead of going outwards, it's going down into the stomach. The yogis call it the breath of victory. I love to refer to it as the breath of cleansing. I find myself actually doing it off the mat all the time, um, whether it's some type of just frustrating thing going on with my child. Maybe it's some type of um, life event that's going on, or maybe someone in traffic is bothering you. You might find yourself doing it a lot more as you practice. It's a very, very healthy way to breathe. And I, I'll post some stuff about the Ujjayi breath too, so you can really start to understand it. Maybe even do some studying on pranayama. So anyways, despite my ranting, let's go ahead and shift down to our backs. Come to lie down on your back. So you can have the bottoms of your feet on the mat if it feels a little bit better on your lower back taking pressure off or if you'd like to extend your legs out, feel free to do that. And let's just take a few moments to settle into the breath, letting it flow in and out through the nose. And again, set your intention. Do not feel obligated to stay with your originally set intention. Feel totally comfortable to switch up your intention throughout your practice. Just like life, every single second is changing. Every single second is moving. Life is about adapting as well as your practice. You might do a pose one day and it might feel great. The next day it might be, it might be a little bit more painful. So don't ever have any expectation as you come into your practice. Just be in the moment and adapt to how however your mind is leading you. So just listen to your intuition. That is my 
best advice I can give you when it comes to practicing yoga, when it comes to practicing life. So just keep breathing here. Now, as you continue that even breath, let's begin to bring the feet. If they are not extended, begin to extend them out. Point the toes towards the bottom corners of the mat. Now reach the arms and hands up to the top corners. We're creating a laying down star. So continue your even breath as you point the toes, reach the fingers, full body stretch. Take a few moments to breathe here. As you open the body, you awaken it. And on your next inhale, let's gently raise that left arm, left leg, bringing them over towards the right side. Now you're bringing that left leg over the right, crossing that left arm over the right wrist. Now, if this bothers your wrist, your arm, you feel any tingling or numbing sensation, simply raise the left arm up and out. You're still getting a very awesome stretch in the side body. Again, adapt to however it makes you feel good. No discomfort, no pain should be felt. Continue your breathing. Next, once you have your arms and legs situated, make sure your left shoulder is planted on the mat. Now, if you have your hand over towards the right and you can't keep that left shoulder planted, maybe raise the left hand up and out. They call this the banana pose, bananasana in Sanskrit. So you're stretching out the left side of your body all the way from your left wrist to the arm, throughout the arm to the armpit, to the side body, down through the waist, to the legs, to the ankles. Keep breathing gently and naturally here. more even breaths. On your next inhale, gently raise the left arm and left leg, bring them back to those corners. Take a moment to point the fingers, reach the toes, breathe, keep that even breath in between the stretches. On your next inhale, gently raise the right arm and right leg, bringing them over towards the left side now. Now again, check in with the right shoulder. Make sure there's no tingling or numbing sensation throughout the right arm or wrist. You need to maybe raise the arm up and out instead of having it over. Now let's stretch out that right side of the body. Gently breathe it all out. Fun fact, the armpit is one of the most neglected parts of the body. Release it all and breathe it all out. more breaths here. Breathe that breath, even, natural, flowing. As you inhale next, gently raise the right arm and right leg, bring them back to those corners. Take a moment to reach the fingers out, point the toes. Now let's begin to bring our hands back down to our sides. And let's draw the right knee into our chest. We're gonna focus on pointing the left toes out here for a moment. We'll begin to shift that left leg here in just a moment. Just focus on keeping the breath even, drawing the right knee in, pointing the left toes out. As you stretch out the front of that left leg, you release this right waist, all that compression you might be feeling. Just breathe it all out. And if it bothers you to place your hands on top of your knee. Maybe place them underneath this hamstring. Both ways will release that waist. Just keep 
Keep the even breath. Few more even deep breaths in and out through that nose. Just let it all go. Now let's begin to bring the bottom of this left foot to the mat. As you continue drawing this knee in, it all of a sudden becomes a whole different pose. It takes pressure off of the lower back and helps you to focus a little bit more on this waist. Keep the breathing. Few more even breaths here. Now let's begin to grab the outside of this right foot drawing the knee out to the side and so we begin to just open up the hip stretch out this glute just keep breathing gently again there should be no discomfort here now you can stay here or if you'd like to make this a more active hip stretch we're going to raise this left leg place the outside of this right ankle right above the left knee now i want you to interlace your fingers to meet underneath the left hamstring. Let the left calf relax. Next, we're gonna check in with this right foot right here. Make sure it's flexed. So when I say flex, it means keep the right foot straight, okay? Maintain that flexion of the foot. Now on each inhale, we're gonna draw the left knee in towards the chest, and as we exhale, use the right elbow to push this right knee out. So maintain the flexion of the foot, Maintain the even breath and the movement matching the breath. So as you inhale, draw the left leg in, breathe out, push the right knee out. Keep the balance within it all. It's very neat with yoga. It's all about alignment. Starting with the breath, with the body. Keep breathing. breathing here. Few more even gentle breaths. As you exhale, go ahead and release the leg. Bring the feet down to the edges of the mat and let the knees fall together. Now you can extend, let's extend the arms up above the head as we open up the shoulders some more. Keep that even breath here. Let's bring our hands back down to our side. Let's extend the right leg, draw the left knee into the chest. And let's breathe here as we release the whole left waist here, all of that compression. We're pointing the right toes out, stretching out the front of that right leg. Keep that even breath. breathing. Few more even deep breaths here.
Let's begin to bring the bottom of the right foot to the mat as you continue drawing that knee in. Once again, just doing a simple movement, making the pose completely different, taking off the pressure of that lower back. Just keep breathing. Keep the breath flowing. Maybe begin to grab the outside of this left foot, drawing that knee out, opening that hip, stretching out the glute. Keep the breath flowing. Now, if you'd like to keep the foot here and just keep holding on to it, that, that way you're maintaining the flexion without really straining the foot, stay here. Or if you'd like to participate in reclined pigeon, <laughs> let's raise the right leg, place the outside of the left ankle right above the right knee. Let's interlace the fingers to meet underneath the right hamstring. Let the right calf relax. Now again, flex the left foot as you breathe evenly, match the inhales with the drawing the right leg in. As you breathe out, push that right or that left knee out. So inhale, draw in, exhale, push out. Keep breathing. Breathe, breathe. Most important part. Keep checking in with the left foot. It might might tend to get a little lazy. These cues will take time to remember. So don't beat yourself up if you all of a sudden, you hear me cue, flex the foot, and you, you notice that it's relaxed. Just go with the flow and move without judgment. Keep breathing. Few more breaths here. As you exhale, let's release the leg. Bring both bottoms of the feet to the corners. Let the knees fall together. Reach the hands up above the head. Breathe gently. Bring your hands back down to our side. Let's draw the knees into the chest and let's grab the insides of the feet. Maybe extend the legs out, maybe rock back and forth. Maybe grab the outsides of the feet and draw the knees to the outsides of the arms. So this is happy baby. Right here where I'm at is a passive happy baby. Grabbing the insides of the feet and extending the legs is more of an active. You don't have to rock around, but this is a hip opener a complete leg stretcher on top of it. Keep breathing. Let's draw the knees into the chest. Let's bring the knees over. We're actually gonna shift over to our stomachs. Oof, I could have probably fallen asleep after that. <laughs> So let's come to our bellies, and this is going to be a shoulder stretch. So I actually need to move a little farther off of my mat. Actually, I'll do the left arm first so you see what I'm doing. We're going to extend the left arm out, just tee it out, and use our right hand and our right foot to gently raise the right side of the body here. Now you can keep the right foot on the inside of the left leg, or if you wanna take the twist a little further and open up this right hip flexor, feel free to place it on the outside of the left knee. Let's breathe here as we open up the left shoulder, 
We twist the belly, we're detoxing the belly, de-stressing the back here as well, especially the shoulders. Keep breathing. Exhale, lower down onto the forehead. Let's create a pillow with our hands. Rest the forehead and let the hips rock back and forth here. Now let's do the other side. We're going to tee the right arm out to the side. Use the left hand and left foot to gently raise the left side of the body. Now you can keep the left foot on the inside of this right leg or place it on the outside. And breathe gentle, breathe even as you open up that right shoulder. Keep breathing. Open up that shoulder, detox the belly, de-stress the back. Open up the hip flexor if you do have that foot on the outside. Keep the even breath. As you exhale, lower down the left side of the body. Come on to that pillow once more, just for a moment here. Let those hips rock back and forth. Now, I wanna actually teach you um, this little, it's not really even a sequence, it's a movement. So we're gonna shift from Cobra to Downward Facing Dog. Now, there are two ways to do Cobra. First off, I want to make the biggest point here. Have the tops of your feet on the mat. Don't ever, let me shift forward so you can see what I'm doing. Don't ever have your, the balls of your feet planted like that. I see a lot of people doing this on YouTube and Instagram, you're gonna hurt your lower back doing that. If you keep the bottoms of your feet on the mat, you'll find relief in the lower back. You'll find yourself being able to do this back bend a little better. So, to come into, we can do low cobra or high cobra. We're gonna place our hands underneath our shoulders and keep the elbows close into the body. Now, if you wanna do low cobra, simply lift your ch chest just a little bit and lift the chin to open the throat. Or if you'd like to rise up into high cobra, go all the way down to the waist. The biggest point here is to have the bottoms of your, or the tops of your feet planted and to raise your chin. So no matter if you're in low cobra or high cobra, have your chin lifted, have the tops of the feet planted and have the elbows close into the body. So take five even breaths here. And after your fifth breath, I want you to flip the toes, use your core, breathe in, shift to downward facing dog. Pedal the knees back and forth here. Let the head hang. Downward facing dog, you are releasing your entire legs, all the way from the ankles, to the Achilles tendon, to the calf, to the back of the knee, to the hamstrings, to the glutes, all the way through the back, to the arms. Everything is being released here. And plus, you're strengthening your core. So downward dog. And go ahead and lower the knees. And get into a comfortable position. I did a little bit more than I anticipated for the warm-up. I apologize. I know that I said I was going to try and keep these warm-up videos to 15 minutes, but you gained a little bit more. Um, I will definitely have probably two more warm-up videos to go with this series, and I'll have uh, one of them posted tomorrow. And actually, I'll probably have both of them posted tomorrow, just depending on children and puppy stuff. But uh, just take about, when you hit stop on this video, look at your phone, set a timer, 
or maybe talk to Alexa. And I want you to practice breathing even for three minutes. Just start off doing three minutes. Eventually, I'd like to get to about six minutes. There's a lot of brain activity that happens when someone meditates for six minutes or more. It's pretty magical. So if you have any questions, please feel free to message me, text me, call me, anything you need. I am here and we are going to be our best selves, not just for summer, but beyond. But summer is a good motivator. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for joining. Namaste.